Uh, there are a lot of people watching uh, from the outside, uh, anxiously uh, looking uh, at Ukraine as it's being bombed and as lives are being lost. And some have had the opportunity to help their loved ones by actually traveling to Europe. Max Kurgansky has lived this experience. In March, uh, he made the decision to leave the United States where he lives and go to Ukraine to help his family escape. He chronicled that journey in an essay for People magazine. And Max is with us now uh, live to talk about that experience. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us and for waking up early to be with us this morning. Um, the night of, of February 23rd, if we go back on the calendar, uh, was the beginning of Russia's invasion. How difficult and immediately was it to keep in touch with your family members or were you able to stay in touch and just hear what they were going through? So it was it was a little bit difficult. I mean, it's, you know, consider the time difference, of course, uh, it's seven hours between uh, Kiev and uh, New York. So the problem was mostly because people weren't really sure what was happening. People eventually did realize that, hey, this is a war. And, you know, my 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 dad had my my dad's house is actually close to a uh, military military testing ground, so he he knows what military explosions sound like. So that's how he. I was about to go to bed, so this is uh, probably like 10, 11 p.m. He wrote to me, "Hey, I think what I what we've been thinking in the last couple of months has started." And and, and and for you, was that enough of a compelling reason to actually? put yourself at risk and enter a, a potential war zone to travel to Ukraine? Um, it wasn't that necessarily. Uh, I know my dad had a place to go that would be safe for the time being. Um, it was because my, my mom's father actually lives on the northwestern outskirts of Kiev, uh, which is where, you know, the main Russian force was coming in from. And that's where you hear all the atrocities that allegedly, you know, and well, you can say more or less confirmed, have happened to the Ukrainian civilians. So, you know, my mom was, of course, concerned and she said, well, do whatever you want. I'm going, you know, if you want to come with me, that's fine. Uh, you know, and this is where I realized that I needed to do my thing in order to help her. And you helped your whole family. I know your grandfather is back here in the United States, so at first reluctant to leave, which I think most of us who have granddaddies understand. Um, but you were able to reunite with family members, uh, getting out of Ukraine safely, uh, and meet them actually at the Polish border. Can you just describe that moment? So it, it, it wasn't at the Polish border, actually, because the way our logistics worked out is that we managed to get them to Lviv and then from Lviv directly to Krakow in Poland. So they went directly from Ukraine into a Polish town. So we actually didn't, they actually went through the border crossing themselves. And uh, we got them onto a bus and uh, the bus actually has a priority lane, which, you know, in comparison to what, you know, we see on the images of people crossing by foot was fortunately for them, comparably nice, but still meeting them on the other side, you could tell, you know, they spent, almost the whole day on the bus, just sitting and looking at the people around them, walking in and the images that they've shared with me, it just, you know, it's a whole essay in and of itself, to be honest. Yes, and people can read so. more about your story, which is chilling. And, and obviously a lot of people are, are in your shoes and watching from the outside. So. Uh, Again, thank you for sharing your journey, the, the compelling uh, details of that in People magazine. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.